welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware and this is Brian Grindstaff. Now today we're going to be talking a little bit about tubes. Now, Brian, I, you know, you can look at these and you can go, well, it's just pipe. But there's a difference between just pipe and a boiler tube. Right. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we get, we get that all the time where people call in and it's like, yeah, I need some boiler pipe. And then you got to really say, okay, well, what's it being used for? Oh, it's inside the boiler. Oh, you're looking for a boiler tube. Right. Um, you know, and the boiler tubes are different from pipe, even though in some cases they're made in the same places that people yeah. make pipe. Right. Uh, but they do come in different thicknesses, different wall thicknesses. The manufacturing processes can be a little bit different, okay. um, whether that's either a, a cold drawn over application or whether that's like a, uh, like a, like a seamless type build or uh, a welded, electric welded resistance tube. So there's, there's all sorts of different processes for, for boiler tubes. Yeah. Uh, and we get asked all the time, you know, hey, you know, I, I, I don't know what, what size tubes I need, but I, I know I've got a leak, you know, what, mm -hmm. what, what do I need to buy? Sure. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And what we would always recommend, uh, one, you should have a uh, properly licensed boiler contractor sure. uh, that is always helping you along with this process because you have to have the proper stamps to be able to put these tubes back in the boiler okay you know you can't just go buy the tubes as an end user and say yeah i'm gonna fix my boiler myself right, um right. you know both sides <laughs> there's a proper process and yeah. stamps that you have to have they mm -hmm. have to be inspected mm -hmm. um and and with that it's there's a process to identify okay what is the proper material that i should be putting back in mm. um, because it's not just one of those things where you can just throw any boiler tube back in the boiler even though it's the same size OD even. Oh, okay. Um, because, you know, usually uh, the inspectors are going to require you to at least put in the same material as the manufacturer. Okay. Um, because that's the way the boiler was designed. Sure, sure. Um, so with that, we're, you know, you want to be able to make sure that you can identify the proper material going back in. In some cases, they'll give you allowances to say, well, you can put something a little thicker back in, but you can't go thinner. Okay. Um, so there's a minimum type thing there, and sometimes as contractors, we have to do a little dance with the inspector on saying, okay, well, what's, what, what can we do here right. Uh, right. based on availability? Okay. okay. Um, and then internally for us, um, you know, trying to identify the tubes, you know, as a, as a contractor, your contractor should come in, open your boiler up. Um, really, they can, they can take calipers and figure out the gauge thickness of the tubes to, mm -hmm. to know what the OD is and the ID is. Yeah. But more often than not, what we're having to do is we're going to have to pull uh, ASME data sheets from okay. the National Board. Okay. Um, so normally we'll go, we'll order uh, either a P2 sheet or a P3 sheet. Uh, in, in some scenarios, it may even be like U-stamp type things if they're Section 8 vessels. Right. But in a boiler Section 1, fire tube that's going to be a P2 sheet. Okay. Uh, and on that P2 sheet, that's an actual ASME data sheet that lists all the pressure vessel components that that manufacturer had to put into that boiler um, to make sure that it meets the ASME standards. Okay. And once they manufacture that, it gets registered with the national board. The national board keeps a copy of it. And then contractors like us can call the national board and say, hey, how was this built? I need to know how many tubes were in it, what the mm. material grade was, what the OD of the tube is, mm -hmm. and it'll succinctly tell you what those things are so we can advise this is the proper tube going back in the boiler. Oh, awesome. Now, um, obviously, there's, there's, there's several different types of tube, and one of the, the big things now is that XID. What, can I maybe explain a little bit about the XID? Right. So the XID, like, <clears throat> uh, so you've got a smooth tube that's just basically like a, like a rifle barrel that sure. goes straight down and it's just smooth all the way through, or you've got an XID, which is like other rifled barrels. Yeah. Uh, it's got a rifled tub tubing that's actually grooved and they call that an expanded surface tube. Okay. Uh, and what, what the idea behind it is, is you get extra heating surface inside that tube when you have that extra material that creates those groups. Mm -hmm. So in, in scenarios for boiler design and boiler manufacturers, um, you know, there's a standard years ago that people would build boilers to five square foot heating surface for, for to be able to get the heat transfer and the, and the longevity out of the boiler. Right. Um, well, now you can reach that square footage in different ways. 
by adding by adding that you might in some scenarios you might have thinner tube sheets you mm -hmm. may have thinner shells mm -hmm. um, you're, you're taking metal out of the boiler and actually putting them where the heat transfer is and not on the structure but where the heat actually needs to be uh, transferred into the water okay so okay. but cool. yeah that's a that's a whole design thing that sure. that they engineer around right right now let's just say that there's a couple tubes that uh, are bad in a boiler mm -hmm. um, and they're uh, maybe in a couple different spots. Um, yep. Tell me about the measuring of, of that and kind of how that works. Right, so these boilers uh, over time, you know, the manufacturer will obviously publish a length of what they put in there. Sure. But over time, these boilers get heated up, they stretch, they shrink as they cool down, you know, they, they're moving, yeah. right? So uh, as a boiler contractor, you know, the boiler contractors are going in there, they're taking measurements in different spots and they're making sure that, you know, when they go to cut those tubes, that they're gonna fit in the hole and they have enough meat for them to be able to roll or seal weld as uh -huh. they need to put those tubes in. Right. So you've got, you know, your first pass, your second pass, in some cases, your third and fourth pass. Um, you know, some of, these, some of these dimensions can be different. Okay. Um, and then uh, based on the boiler design, they could be designed different based on the turnaround of the boiler as well. Okay. So you might have actually two different lengths of tube in the boiler. Sure, sure. Yeah, so sure. make sure you yep. do, that you uh, check that for sure. Now, getting into kind of what we're seeing in the background here, um, you know, obviously you had just talked about that, you know, there's different tubes for order, but how do you decide what you carry? Um, so based on a lot of the fire tube market for us, um, we know what we see and, mm -hmm. and what we retube every day. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some standard sizes that come along with that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the different boiler manufacturers use the same uh, OD tube, what, whether that's a two inch or a two and a half inch, 0 0.105 wall, that's kind of a standard that all of these major manufacturers use. Okay. Um, but we do, I mean, we've got inch and a half tubes, we've got three inch tubes mm -hmm. and you know, I've been I've been with Ware now for 20 something years and the amount of boiler manufacturers that have made boilers over the last hundred and something years, yeah. there's all sorts of them. Sure. And they all do their own thing sometimes right. and sometimes the tubes are all over the place. Yeah. Now, of course we can't stock them all, right. but we really tried to come up with what takes care of a bulk of the, the normal commercial industrial market that we, that we deal with every day. Right, right. And one of the things that you did too is it was really made things pretty simple when we got the, the cutting uh, you know, saw that actually can cut a full bundle right. um, in seven minutes. Yeah, se uh, seven and a half minutes, seven and a half minutes. bundle, yeah. right. Yeah. So, so can... yeah, I mean, you used to cut these on a chop saw one by one, one by it'd one. take half a day to cut some tubes and yeah. now we can throw hundreds of tubes out there and get them cut in minutes, load them on the trailer. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the times we have contractors call us up and say, hey, I need 300 tubes and I need them tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and, and here's what my measurements are. Right. And we right. get to work right away. We start cutting those tubes. We put them on a trailer. We hot shot them all over the place. Yeah. Um, and the contractors are happy because, you know, a lot of the times when they buy this stuff from mills and, and other tube suppliers, sure. they have to do their own cutting. Right. So we just saved them half a day's worth of labor sure. uh, by using our big fancy saw. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. and it, it is really cool, and you, lots of inventory that you have here, so uh, yeah. make sure you give Brian a call. And appreciate it, Brian, and we will yeah. see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, appreciate Brian hanging out with us and uh, talking about boiler tubes. Well, there's a bunch of different things about boiler tubes that uh, uh, to know, obviously, right? And uh, if you need anything at all, make sure you give him a call, as we've got a ton of boiler tubes in stock and we will be ready to get them to you. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on X and share those videos for us as it helps our algorithms. And we will see you next time on The Boiling Point.